they're going to send these guys 100% of whatever money. Let's say it's actually let's say it's $1000. And in turn, let's say a uh, oh, thousand bucks is nothing to a bank. But let's try to draw this out. Let's say Chase or Capital One gets a thousand dollars from the Fed, then it will return um, one thousand fifty dollars if it's paid back within that year. Okay, it's about 1050 It's going to be a little off because of com compound interest, but it's about right. So, basically, the Federal Reserve is loaning out $1,000 and sending in 1050 afterwards in a year. The question is, where did that money come from? That's the point of the whole system. So, where did the money come from? Let's say this is the first transaction ever. How in the heck can that happen? They cannot pay an extra 50 bucks. That, if that were the first transaction ever done, and the Federal Reserve is the one that creates the money. So what has to happen? They have to, they, they have to take out another loan for at least $50. Is that right? Do you, get the, do you follow that? They have to at least take out an extra 50 bucks. But what happens if they can't pay the 50 bucks? Because this is gone. That 50 bucks came from them, obviously. You see that? So now they have to pay another 5250. Uh, $50.25. Uh, 50 cents. Whatever. Something like that. Fifty dollars. Let's say it's fifty twenty-five. I have no idea. All right. So where'd the quarter come from? Well, they gotta take out another loan. All right, so for a quarter, but you get the point. You know, it's this repeating cycle. And they're the ones making the money like literally making the money. They got a printing press and whatever money they hand out will be paid to them. The, the, this is the whole process. The, this is why these guys need you to take out more loans even now. You know, you're, you know, um, say I ask for a thousand bucks all right, whatever, hold on. So if I ask for a thousand bucks, I have to pay the bank a thousand fifty if we're at five percent. It's more like twenty five percent now. But you know, and especially where I wouldn't be able to pay that kind of money off in a year, I'd have to take a couple years probably. But um yeah, anyway, so the whole thing is a thousand bucks comes to me. I have to pay this money back, 1050 But in order to do so, I'd need to take out another loan, or somebody would have to take out a loan. I'm sorry, let me clarify this. Somebody somewhere has to take a loan out. And I can work for that money from that person, whatever person. It doesn't matter who. But somebody is going to have to take out the loan initially. And that's where, why this is a scheme. It's a fiat scheme. It's, uh, that's why gold is okay to use if it's under the actual government, not a bank. The way it used to be. Let me show the way it used to be. I hope you understood what I'm trying to t tell you. It's a lot more in-depth than that, I think. But um, that's the premise. Now, if... We had the bank, uh, the government. When money was actually under the Treasury and Congress, money was free. It was free. 
you know, I mean, it, it, there's no loan to a, a bank initially. The Federal Reserve is a bank. They can make money out of thin air, and it's based on nothing because there's no gold to back it up. I mean, there might be gold at Fort Knox or whatever, but there's, you cannot trade in that our dollar for gold from a bank. Okay. Now, when the government had our money, this is what would happen. Um, whatever. <clears throat> the point is, the government could loan out to the banks, and the banks would generally not turn, uh, loan out to the government. Now, when a bank, let me compare this. I guess I didn't really draw this correctly. Uh, no, I'm still not. Hold on. <laughs> All right. So... The Fed is a bank, remember that. Now, government <clears throat> Do you see the difference? The government could loan out to banks. Uh, this is back in the day. This is um, before 1913, this is more like the 1800s. I keep on knocking the easel. <laughs> All right, so uh, now, might as well just call it now. All right, so the government is actually loaning from the Fed, along with the other banks. The government before could loan out to the banks through f uh, our our money because it truly was the people's money so you would have um, now since the Federal Reserve is loaning out to the government the government has to necessarily pay back an interest so this is why we're in such debt and that's why you see the oh man you see this uh, oh, I forget the website it's um but they keep track of the public debt and all sorts of numbers. You know, and you, like every second you would see that this tr 12 trillion number is actually making interest once every second. You know what I mean? It's ticking. And um, that's a pretty interesting website. I, I got, I'll look it up. You know what? I'll look it up. Um, but uh, Glenn Beck had it on his show. Um, let's see. So the point I'm trying to make, I guess, is that we're in debt. We're all in debt. We, you, you as a taxpayer, owe about $38,000. You know, every person owes that much money as, because of the public debt. And then you have your own personal debt. You know what I mean? So um, that's just ridiculous. And so this, okay, getting back to the whole point of the subject, um, ben Bernanke, eh, yeah, he doesn't deserve it. <laughs> I went through all of that for nothing. No, it wasn't for nothing. Anyway, um, and I also, uh, speaking of the person of the year, um, Ben Bernanke, you know, this is the explanation as to why no Federal Reserve Chairman deserves person of the year, or man of the year, or woman of the year. Anyway, so the appro uh, approval rating of Obama, I just found this out today. And I printed it out. This was MSNBC. Uh, they did a poll. Uh, Obama's approval r dips below 50%. And the subtitle is 47% uh, say his overhaul is a bad idea. 55% support Afghan surge. Um, so, uh, I'm just going to read the first few parts. Uh, for much of his first year in office, 
President Barack Obama has largely defied political gravity in the midst of skyrocketing unemployment, an ambitious legislative agenda, and wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. His approval rating remained above 50 percent. A plurality viewed his party positively, and even the number believing the country was on the right track, despite the bad news, temporarily spiked during his first few months on the job. But now, nearing the end of his first year in office, the economy, the wars, and the legislative skirmishes finally have taken a poll on the president and his party, according to the latest NBC News Wall Street Journal poll. 